So let's face it, online dating sucks, right? Not necessarily. If we've asked God for the green light and he's given us the go ahead, then online dating doesn't have to be the pits. Satan might try and attack us in our singleism, but there are steps we can take to make sure that we are protected. If you're struggling in the online dating game and need some encouragement, just keep watching. Hi beloveds, welcome back. Daniela Shama Rose here. I'm new to YouTube and I'm super passionate about bringing faith-based encouragement to singles. I was purposely single for over 10 years while waiting on the one that God had for me after I became born again at 21. However, my single journey did include a short time online dating. Yes, it did. And it was short enough for me to figure out what online dating was all about. Mainstream online dating is all about sex. I mean, isn't it? Tinder, plenty of fish. As Christians, we need to protect our purity and hold out for plan A, God's love story for us. I'm not saying that God can't use this platform as a means of bringing in your man, even as a Christian. But girl, you better be sure this is where the Lord is leading because it can be one of Satan's biggest traps for singles. Let's go over some online survival dating tips. So number one is, Take time to see that God is in fact giving you the green light to go ahead and engage in online dating. Spend lots of alone time with the Lord, fasting, in prayer. Take time to really search your heart and your motives. Emotions can definitely get in the way. It's hard waiting for your person. Maybe you're sick of the wait. You know, the Hebrew word for mourn is actually almost identical to the Hebrew word for wait. So that just goes to show you right there, waiting and mourning, not exactly the most pleasant of all things. I know all about the want of marriage, but trust me, if God isn't in it, there's no point in even going down that path because you're going to be left feeling more heartbroken, lonely, maybe even defiled than when you had started in the beginning. Online dating can be the devil's playground. So believe me, you don't want to go there without the Lord's leading or you leave yourself wide open for attack. Firstly, make sure that your desire for online dating is the same as God's desire for you. And that is a really good place to start. Number two is protect your heart above all else. Okay, so you've been diligent. You've sought the Lord in prayer. You feel like you've gotten the yes or the go ahead. You make your online portfolio or profile or you had one already. Now what? The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8 to 10, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Beloveds, he hates us. He wants to destroy us. And he has a special hate on for us because we're women. He wants us to not find love, not have God's plan A. He hates love, and he wants you to be miserable. As women, I believe we were created to crave romance and purity. And I believe God has that for us to be swept off our feet. The enemy would seek to pervert this and use sex and all kinds of inappropriate things in the dating world to thwart this. Girl, go in with both eyes open to the enemy's cunningness. Number three is let yourself be pursued. I believe men were made to be the pursuers and real men love doing it. Sit back and let the guys message you. They're filled with testosterone for a reason. I believe it's in their DNA and their makeup to want to pursue. They get a satisfaction from it. I believe it's better to let the man lead. Call me old fashioned, but I also believe that the man should foot the bill. Okay, so number four is pray about who you respond to. Absolutely do not engage in any pictures sent to you of the male anatomy. Yes, it happens. If you haven't been online dating, I'm warning you now. It's disgusting. It's disrespectful. Obviously, you guys wouldn't respond, but I'm just putting it out there. Pray that God would lead your conversations and keep these nasties that the enemy would send your way far from you. I'm going to throw another awesome verse at you. Proverbs 4.23 in the King James Version says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Number five thing is, be wise and discerning. If you've been chatting with somebody for two weeks and haven't met, abandon shit. If anything seems weird, off, not quite right in your spirit, get out of there, sister. 
I don't mean to ghost the person. Let them know why you're ending things, but definitely end things. For that matter, if the person that you're chatting with is anything less than nice, normal, and sweet, abandon ship. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Number six is don't judge a book by the cover. If a nice, seemingly sweet guy messages you, don't write him off because he's got long hair and you like short hair, or he doesn't seem to check all your boxes. Yes, of course attraction matters, but it is not king. It's the heart that matters most. Listen to God's leading always, and this obviously applies to when you're actually going out on dates as well, not just chatting. You may not be feeling romantic feelings right away. That's okay. Give it a chance to blossom later. Please, for me, give the guy a second date. Maybe romance will blossom later, maybe it won't, but at least you gave it a chance. It wasn't until the second date with my husband that I started feeling butterflies. We were walking my dog in the park and he reached down and grabbed my hand and my heart did a little flip-flop, which was definitely a welcome surprise. And the romance grew from there. On our first date, we talked a lot and I really got to know him as a person. I was attracted to him, but he wasn't my typical type. I just felt really comfortable and like I had known him for years. There was just a mutual like at first. It wasn't right away, oh my gosh, he's the one. I'm going to marry him. I'm so in love. So please, for me, give the guy a chance. Number seven is remember, you are a daughter of the king. You, beloved, deserve the best. You should never have to wait to know a man's true intentions towards you. A real man will make it clear. After the first date, he will try and secure another date. And it's the same with the dates there on after. He will be actively pursuing your heart and he will make it clear to you his intentions. If this isn't happening and you feel like you're just kind of there or there's ghosting of any kind going on, hightail it out of there, sister. He's not the one for you. You are nobody's second or third choice. Remember, you are number one to God. You are the apple of his eye, and so you will be to Mr. Right, who God has for you. I promise. So listen, have you been making some mistakes in the online dating game? Have you been settling for mediocrity instead of the plan A that God has for you? You are definitely not alone, sister. I've been there, and so have a bunch of us. The truth is, the desire for a mate is godly and good. But what happens is the enemy gets in there and tries to make us settle for some smooching and empty vows. This is your sign to turn it around today if you've been going down this path and feel discouraged, or to be aware of some of the pitfalls if you haven't ventured into online dating yet. The dating world today has this no strings attached mentality, which makes it seem harmless, but please don't be fooled. The enemy uses this weakness of being lonely to pray and attack. If you're gonna venture here, beloved, you better be 100% sure that this is where the Lord is leading. And definitely put on your holy girl armor found in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 in the NIV. Maybe for some of you, this is a wake up call that nope, the Lord didn't call you to online dating and it's time to delete your app. Honestly, I think the best thing is to just kiss dating goodbye altogether, but you do you and listen to the Lord's leading always. So let me pray for all my single sisters out there. Father, I lift up your beloveds your precious daughters. I see some of them, Lord, they're struggling. They, they did the online dating, it started out as innocent, and they're really hurting now, Father. They're heartbroken. And I pray that you would just heal them now in Jesus' mighty name and restore them. Some, Lord, are toying with the idea of online dating. I pray that you would guide them and give them wisdom and discernment. I pray for the future husbands of these beautiful women, Lord. I pray that you would keep them both strong in faith as they wait for each other and wait upon their arrival in Jesus' mighty name. Always remember that God has the perfect mate for you. He is on the way. Stay strong in the faith. Beloved, I hope this video has been encouraging for you. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Blessings and love. See you in the next one.